is all ready for the day. Man, I'm doing good. Um, first call, close. So that's always, uh, don't say it happens a lot, but that's always a kickstart to your day. But man, just blessed, blessed to be here. Blessed to wake up, blessed to serve these families. Blessed to control your income. It's just, yeah, man, blessed, happy. You're in full control of your life, man. And how does that feel? Um, it's lovely, dude. I thank myself every morning for it. It's it's something that I think a lot of us overlook because we kind of get caught up at times with, um, you know, the chargebacks, the the negativity of the business. But there's a reason why we make so much money here, you guys, because what we're providing is financial protection for families. And so, of course, there's going to be struggles and pitfalls and and really feeling like you're, you're dragging through the mud to get to the other side. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm assuming you can speak from a place of conviction that it wasn't easy when you first got started, right? No, not at all. Not at all. But one thing, no. like I like I mentioned earlier, man, there was something in your eyes or something about your demeanor that I said, this man's on a mission. He's not playing around. You know, I, I've you know, I, I onboarded a bunch of agents. I've talked to a lot of people who like to use that lip talk. But one thing about Beto, it wasn't a bunch of lip talk is a, bu a bunch of foot action, feet action. And that's what I look at. I don't look at someone's mouth. I look at someone's feet because their actions are going to speak louder than their words. And so before we dive into this, man, I just want to have you give a quick introduction of who you are, where you're at, who is Robert Tarango? Um, my name is Robert. I'm currently here in uh, Sacramento. I'm 33 years old. I've been in the business for about a year and a month now. Um, I came from like a warehouse kind of type of background. Um, my last job, I was doing a bunch of plans for big companies. They would do like the electrical wiring, security wiring. So it was laid back, it was chill. I didn't really have a boss. So I kind of already got used to that. I would go in and do these projects and make sure I got it done. It was cool. I didn't have someone like, you know, hey, do this, do that. So it was cool about that, but just got complacent and got super used to it. Um, and then obviously I kind of met the Chico crew. Um, this is when you guys were still posting stuff and like you guys were able to like post the cells and all that. And I'm like, bro, this is, this is unreal. Like there's no way I hated on it for the longest time. Didn't want to do it. I'm, I'm be straight on this. I'm keep it a hundred. Um, I hated on my, no, 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 I'll never do that. Not going to do it. Cause you, you watched uh, this for a while, got, right? It wasn't yeah, just like, like it wasn't just like a, a couple days or a week. Like you were seeing what we were doing for a couple months, right? For a couple months, and I started watching videos, and I'm like, bro, like this is unreal. So, um, was about to do it. Someone tested me. We're like, I bet you couldn't uh, pass your test. We we'll said, don't tell me I won't do it because I'll do it. Um, <laughs> so I got COVID from my job, so I was out for like two weeks. And I was like, well, what's the best time to do it? So I literally, the day I got COVID, I booked my test to take the test. So that was a week and a half out, a week. It was a week out, um, booked my test. I was like, shit, I gave myself, a, excuse me. Um, I gave myself a due date. So then the whole week, study, 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 went to my test and passed it. I went back to my work and said, I'm out. No two week notice. None of that. I was like, if I'm diving in, I'm going 10 toes down. Okay. So quit my job, got into this. Um, but even before that, dude, I was like, when I made that decision, I was going to do this. I was like mad, mad, mad videos. Like, I mean, even to this day, I still have my objections. I still had my goals that I wanted to do already written down. Um, so that's, that's already new. I was like, man, this was something I really wanted to do. Um, just knowing how much of the hours I did without even my license, I already had a script I memorized, already had objections on on uh, note cards and um, was just ready to do it. And then went into the Chico office at that time. Um, yeah, man, just ready to rock. Got a sale my first day. Um, Corrective immediately. So got paid in two days. And I was like, woke up and I was like, what? 
So like, you, you, you ultimately just reconfirmed exactly what I was saying. When I first met you, you had this, you had this look in your eye that I'm not going to just do this business. I'm going to win doing this business. I'm not going to just try out this opportunity. I'm going to own this opportunity. And the fact of the matter that you said that you watched hours of videos before even making your first phone call is a key reason why you've been so successful in this business. I don't think there's enough of us on this call that actually try to work on our craft, who spend those late nights not scrolling through social media, but listening to people who are doing this business and winning at a high level. And it's funny you say that because I was the same way, man. When I first learned about this opportunity, I'm like, look, this sounds way too good to be true. I can't believe the guy who told me about it. He said, what can I, I'm like, I need to hear from somebody else, man. And I started listening to podcasts when I was working out about people's journeys into insurance and how they were successful. And I'll never forget, man, I heard this guy who said he was an Uber driver and he was literally driving the insurance agent to one of the conferences that he was attending and he was doing $20,000 a month. And I just stopped in that gym that day and was like, wait, so this guy knew nothing about insurance, just like you, you had no, no background of insurance, no true background of sales, but this Uber driver, nothing against Uber drivers, but if this Uber driver could learn this business and win at a high level, why the hell can I? And that was my mentality. I'm like, if he can do it, I can do it. And I think that's, that's what some of us need to switch our mindset into is if he can do it, I can do it. Cause I promise you guys, Robert, uses his work ethic and sheer grit to get to the point he was at. He wasn't some magical person with words. He wasn't some magical sales guy that's been doing sales for 10, 15 years. Never he was a sales. guy who probably knew a whole lot about life insurance before he got into this. But the thing I love about this opportunity is that you get to use your work ethic to excel in this business. It doesn't have to be past experience or who you know or whatever that you know whatever those different advantages some people think that others have you can use your sheer grit and determination and allow your mindset to push you through the hard times but and that's kind of where i want to take the first question and for you to to really kind of elaborate on beto is how mentally challenging was it for you when you first got started? Because that's the biggest battle for most people is the mentality. Dude, it was, uh, that's the, I think that was the toughest part. It was like, damn, man, should I have quit my job? <laughs> you know, um, I've had those days, even to this day, I'm still like, I mean, like, fuck, is this really it? Is this what I'm doing, you know? Yeah. Um, but dude, it's, it's, um, it's mental toughening. But then also, I think I remember I talked to you that one time, Gage, and I was like, if I would have never done this business, I don't think my mental toughness would have ever got to where it is because it just pushes you every day. So not only is it like you're making good money, but like, dude, you're growing as a person, even if you don't see it or not, dude, like this business makes you grow. It makes your mental toughness hit, it makes you grind, it makes you work. So, I mean, I just seen it as a win-win, dude. And still to this day, I'm like, man, is this, I, I still go through mental toughness every day. Yep. I don't think it ever necessarily really goes away. You just continue to keep your eye on your prize or remind yourself of the why to push yourself through the hard times. And you're you're exactly right, man. I I mean the not only the professional development that this business will provide to you, but the personal development, different aspects of life that you would never really learn about. I promise you guys, I didn't know a damn thing about social security before I got in this business, but you think I'm a damn social security advisor after being in this business for a couple of years and just burial and cremation and, and people's retirement. I didn't know anything about retirements and who said that we were doing retirement planning. All of a sudden I know about 401ks, 403bs and all these different avenues and fancy letters and, and you know, fancy words that I would have never known about, but this business gives you the exposure to is a beautiful thing. Even if you don't do this business long-term, if you allow this business to teach you 
life principles, you'll walk away from this opportunity as a better person. And so I think it's just so important that you understand we all struggle with our mindset. That's the hardest part of this business, I promise you, is the mindset. It, it doesn't get any easier by any means. You just get conditioned to keep battling through the, 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 the devil on your shoulder telling you that you should go back to your job. This isn't it. You can take the easier route. But I promise you guys, the amount of income that you can make in this business will outweigh that little devil on your shoulder trying to tell you not to do this business. And I've been transparent in this before, and I'll continue to share it. I was five months into this business, you guys, putting out job applications because it was challenging. And I promise you right now, the 42 people that are on this call, we wouldn't be here right now if my resume was good. Because I'd be at another job and doing my own thing and I wouldn't have met half of you amazing people. But because my resume sucked and because I didn't have any other opportunities out there, I had to make this business work. I had to put my foot down and say, I can do this. I got to eliminate that can't or that negativity out. And it's a daily battle. You know, is there any, you know, one or two things that really help you in those days, Beto at all, to, to keep get your mind right or to keep pushing uh, through the hard times or the tough times or the, the, the no sales for a couple days? Um, dude, I just, I know where I've been at and I know what I went through. And just for me to be able to wake up and generate your income and um, is, I think that's already enough. Say your blessings, man, no know what you're doing this for, um, know your why, and then just get to it, dude. That's, that's, that's really it. Um, it's changed my life. It's changed people around me, my family. I'm able to help out. Um, I mean, my mom was a single parent of five kids, so didn't really come from the best background. I mean, didn't make the best decisions growing up. Went to college twice. Obviously I'm not doing it. Didn't graduate. Um, but it was just like a, like, it really could just be like a restart to your life, dude. Like, you don't, and I've only been doing it for a year and it's like, I don't know what else I would do. I want to go back. Um, yeah. Absolutely, man. I think you hit a spot on. I just think that once you get a taste of, of what this can do financially for yourself and then along the journey of the growth you receive as a person, it keeps you striving for more. You're hungry for more. And uh, that's something that I was talking about with uh, Jacob the other day is just like, there wasn't a part of me that ever wanted to just say, okay, I made a couple sales and I'm good for the week because I made more money than I've ever made before. Like I want a more, like how much more can I make in a month? How many more people can I help out? How much can I push myself to keep getting better? Um, now, obviously for new agents, it's a struggle. So doing just some quick reflection, man, I know you've been in the business for a little over a year. What are some key things you did to gain momentum when you were new? Um, I literally asked no question is a dumb question. Any Anybody I knew that was doing it better than I was, best believe I was calling them, asking them. Um, I even remember sitting next to Baldo, Barry, or even when I first met Marcus, and he was killing it. Do I sat right next to him? I'm like, bro, what? Anything that you're doing, anything I could hear you do, like I'm soaking it up. And then just implementing it. Everyone can hear all this, but if you're not trying it, then you're you're pretty much just wasting your time. You're so, spot on, dude. I think it's like this business. It, we're not reinventing the wheel here. I promise you, we've all ripped and duplicated off of other people. And then we've made it our own because the way Marcus talks isn't the way that Beto is going to talk, but the way he presents something, he can recreate it into his own words and make it his own. And that's what this business is, you guys. It's just taking bits and pieces from people who you see excelling or who are successful in this business and put it into action and seeing if it works because not everything that someone does that you try will work. But if you don't at least try it, then you're really just shooting yourself in the foot because there's a reason Beto's issue paid 
25,000 in a month because he got around Marcus who was selling $25,000 a month and Jared, like, Jared as well. Like, dude, and, it's just, yeah. And Jared, like it's, it's one of those things where what you'll quickly learn about this group is we're more than willing to help out and we're more than willing to tell you what we did for success. There's no hidden secrets. There's no secret sauce. There's not, I can't tell you that because I'm doing it around here. We're an open book. We thrive with transparency here. And so you just have to take it into your own hands and pick up the phone or reach out through direct message to get someone's phone number that you want to implement or you want to be like or you're aspiring to be like their business. I promise you guys, my business exploded when I started getting around people who were doing double the amount of work I was doing and selling double the amount what I was doing. I knew that I needed to level up, so I had to find people that would help me level up. And I promise you guys, you will never level up in this business by yourself. You won't, period, point blank. You're not going to level up by yourself. You're gonna end up back at your old job. You're gonna end up back on Indeed sending in applications. So it's key to network with people amongst this team and people in the industry, if I'm being honest with you, that you can leverage to speed up your learning curve. Because at the end of the day, we're all in control of our learning curve. There's gonna be a learning curve. I don't care if you've sold for 15 years and you were the top car salesman or you were the, the top solar guy or you were crushing pest control sales or whatever it was, business to business, there's still a learning curve. But the beautiful thing is you control what that curve looks like. It can be long drawn out, it can be short and sweet. And it's really dependent on the effort you put in, the network you build, and how much you leverage the resources and tools around you. Because that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to give you as many tools and resources for you to take into your own hands and to run with. We can't make you run. We can lead you to the water, but you got to drink the water. And so um, really, Beto, can you just help us understand what drives you to grind so hard? You're one of the hardest working dudes I've ever met. And I respect the hell out of it. I respect the hell out of hustle. But what drives you on Saturday morning? What drives you at 8 p.m. at night? What drives you to wake up at 6 a.m. to start dialing leads on the East Coast? Because people need to understand you got to have something that drives you to get out of bed in the morning and to get better. Um, I was going to say is the family. I mean, the way I grew up, it obviously wasn't raised the best way. Um, that just pushes me every day. I don't want to have to, when I do have my family or now when I'm with my nieces and nephews, I'm able to provide or do the things that I didn't get when I was younger. Um, I want to be able to create the life that I want to live. Um, you know, no one telling me not what to do, do this, do it at this time. And then just being able just to, con you have control of everything in control of your life. Dude, you can control your income. You don't want to work. Well, you're not going to get paid. If you're going to keep grinding, keep working, keep learning, it's going to show up on your deposits every day. So yeah, I just want to say that's, that's my why. No, absolutely, bro. And I, I respect the hell out of it, man. I think that, you know, there's a lot of us on this call that didn't necessarily come up in the best homes. We didn't have the 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 white fence in the, the big house that we got to grow up in. We A lot of us had single parents. A lot of us um, didn't have uh, one of our parents in our lives. And I think that truthfully, when you understand the magnitude of this business and how it can help you change the trajectory of where you're going, you truly get the keys to your life. And it's up to you to put it in the ignition and to take off. This business literally allows you to take control, full control of where you go. And I love to hear that, man, because I think that a lot of times family is what drives us. Family is what gets us out of bed early, keeps us up late at night, keeps us watching the YouTube videos for two to three hours, taking notes, trying to refine our craft and reflect. Um, and if you're struggling, you guys, to put in the activity, you needed to revisit your why, because maybe it's not big enough. 
I promise you right now, if you're wise for money, you're not going to be here a year from now. It has to be bigger than money because money isn't going to drive you out of bed at 6 a.m. Money is not going to tell you to to uh, take the notes of your phone calls or to listen to the call recordings. It has to be more than, than, than money. You have to want to make a difference, whether it's in your own life, in someone else's life, or whatever the circumstance may be. But if you're struggling right now with your drive, just take a second today to revisit your why. Because I promise you, it needs to be a little bit bigger. Because if it's not waking you up every single day, it's not big enough. It, it's not there. Because I promise you, the people who are winning at the highest level in this group have a strong enough why to keep them pushing through the bullshit, through the hard times, through the tough times, through the mentally challenging times, through the stress, all that. It's bigger. It's bigger than the small problems. And I think that, you know, some of you guys heard it uh, uh, last week uh, from our man, Javon, like, don't wish away your problems because you're typically wishing away your purpose. You need to find the purpose in your problems because they're your problems for a reason. And so allow that to fuel your future rather than point the finger or say, this is why I'm not succeeding or this is why I'm not putting in the extra hours, the extra effort, the extra time. Um, now, real quick, Robert, you know, some, I said, Robert, I'm going to call him <laughs> that. Um, give us a couple word tracks that really helped you on the phones or in your presentation, start to close more deals or get more talk time or buy you extra seconds. Cause I know that's typically what most people are looking for are the magical words or the magical phrases that may have helped you to start talking to more people or making more closes. If you can think of a couple. Um, well, the first thing I can think of is, I always like to tell people what, what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be solving the problem. It's not like we're gonna solve, hey, um, we're gonna solve this to take care of that. Like, no, this is a problem to people. Make it hit in their head. Like, dude, we do have a problem. If we don't get this problem solved today, what are you gonna do? So I feel like a lot of people aren't using a problem and they're not making it hit. They say, oh, this is just life insurance and they take care of this. No, these people have a problem. They fill out a request. So call it a problem, identify it as a problem. Um, as well as when I get to the um, verifying myself, I feel like this, I'm already, I'll, I'll do the whole presentation. I'm already telling them that we're getting this done. We're getting this done. Hey, here's my personal information. Here's my personal cell phone number. So Gage, when we do get this in place for you, you have my personal cell phone number. You'll be able to give this here to the beneficiaries, which is Michaela Boot. So whenever they need to reach out to me, they have my personal information and I'll be able to walk them through the whole process. I'm always hitting at them like, dude, we're getting this done. Like this is gonna get done today. Um, yeah. As well as I explain the living benefits to them and then I always like to just, I like to sell myself because everyone's going to tell them living benefits. What is it going to, what's going to make you stand out is look here, Gage, with this, with this coverage here, you're going to be getting an agent full time at your discretion. And that is going to be me. Let them hear that. Let's pause. That's going to be me. Okay. Wow. Okay. So what that means is that anytime we need to hold the carrier, any changes we need to be, we need to be made. I'm going to be your guy. I'm going to be making sure that that is taken care of for you. And pause. Yeah, and pause. Oh, really? Thank you. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much. It doesn't matter if it's Saturday or Sunday. Give me a call. Um, if you or the beneficiary has any questions or concerns, have them give me a call. Um, I don't want you to wait till Monday, like the banks or everything else that opens back up. Give me a call on any questions or concerns that I can answer. I will so just just don't call me after 12 a.m. and they laugh about it. Yep. And you how, know? How, how important would you say it is to have a little bit of humor in the conversation as much of a serious conversation it is there has to be a little bit of humor or light you know I don't know the exact word that I want to use but I just think it's important to get them to laugh a little bit. Uh, always I, I have a couple of a couple lines in there where I get them to laugh because it makes you as a real person. Yep. Um, one is always when I ask for the height and weight, especially if it's a lady, I always tell them, hey, Gage, or let's just say it was Michaela. Hey, Michaela, 
Um, don't tell my mom I asked you this question. She always told me to never ask this to a lady. And that is your height and weight. Oh my gosh. Ha ha. And then, you know, it's just, it gets something that makes you seem like a real person. So, yep. the, um, Michaela, what's your height and weight? Okay. Smoker, no smoker, no. Like, get personal with them. Yep. I, I know relatability. I think one thing that I would, I always try doing with all of the individuals I have the opportunity to speak with is to relate with them and no BS relate like, oh, I like the, the Cowboys too. Cause I don't like the Cowboys. I'm a Bears fan. I'm not going to lie to them. I'm going to be, oh, you like the Cowgirls? And we might start beefing a little bit about it, right? But I think it's important for you to try to find some type of relatability throughout the presentation. People who have COPD, if you have any family members who have COPD and struggle with it, Tell them about it. My grandma died because of COPD. So anyone talks about COPD, I, talk, I bring up my grandma. My grandpa's a truck driver. Anytime I talk to a truck driver, I ask them if they're a long hauler or a short hauler. I'm speaking their terminology. You know, if they're a single parent, hey, my mom's a single parent too. I know the struggle of what that is. And I just think if you can try to get on the same playing field as them, you are a human being and not a salesperson. And that's, that's a huge, why, huge, huge piece. And that's why people need to understand their scripts or whatever they're reading. Because if you don't understand it, then you're just reading a pages out of a book. So you're not listening to them. Yep. Once you've got your script down and you got it to a T, then dude, you can hear them. You can relate to them. They can say something. A it's huge, a, huge skill to have in this business is being an active listener. Michaela always clowns me all the time because people are always talk and talk and talking to me. And I don't even, I do it out of nature because I'm a good active listener. I ask, I, oh, really? They start talking more. Oh, okay. They start talking more. And so it's just key to be an act and then bring up something they said because then they know you're listening. Exactly. So many people don't listen to these seniors. So many people don't ever talk to these seniors. So being able to reiterate some things that they say can really bring down their guard. And that's the thing you guys got to understand is every, every person we speak to's biggest fear isn't that you're going to steal their social security number or their bank account. Their biggest fear is that you're going to sell them on something that they don't need, or you're going to upsell them on something that they can get cheaper. So how can you get that guard down as much as possible? Relatability, humor, asking good questions, digging a little bit deeper. One thing that I heard you do on that call that was fantastic is she said that her grandkids or whoever her beneficiaries are, are dealing with the death of their mother. You asked, what does that look like? Instead of just saying, oh gosh, that's horrible. My condolences, moving on. What does that look like for them? You're making them paint the picture to you on what they're going through. They're probably going through hell. They're probably struggling right now. You're digging deeper into the pain point, just like Michaela said. Once you find the pain, you gotta press on the pain point because I promise you, the more you press on that pain point, the more valuable it is of the information you're providing to them. But you said, what does that look like for them? And she starts elaborating. And the key thing you said was, I see exactly why we're talking today. You want to make sure that they don't have to go through that with you. And that is what we call a soft close. It's so key to have those different soft closes throughout your presentation because it gives you a real gauge on whether or not they're serious about taking this protection out. You can almost sniff out a chargeback if you have those soft closes or you gauge them on their interest in actually getting the application submitted and sent off. So it was so good, dude. And I'm glad that some of you guys got to listen to that call. Now, real quick, just two quick more questions and we'll let you guys get back on your merry way here. How many hours a week do you believe that you're putting in, Beto? 50 to 55. 50 to 55 hours. Honestly? Yeah. I believe you. I just want people to know that you are actually putting in that much work because this is the funky thing. Most of us come from a W-2 where we work 40 hours a week to build someone else's company, to build someone else's dream, 
but there's a ton of you on this call that won't even put 40 hours a week into your dream, into your business, into building your life. That's really weird to me that because someone will pay you a paycheck every single week, you'll show up every day on time, presentable. You know, there's 39 people on here and half of you guys got your camera closed. So you came on here to this meeting to learn today to hide. I'm gonna listen, but I'm not gonna be present. That's really weird to me. It's weird to me that you're on this call, hiding by, I don't give a damn if you're eating Cheetos, if you're at a strip club, I don't care if you're on the beach, I don't give a damn if you're driving your car. Show us that you're here, you're presenting, you're wanting to learn, you're willing to learn. Some of us need that guaranteed check to show up. And that's why you won't work out in this business because you don't have a guaranteed check. You don't have someone calling you saying, where the hell are you at at 8.30 a.m.? You don't have someone asking you, why are you not in the meeting? Why are you hiding behind a screen? That's your personal choice. And we're gonna allow you to do that. But I promise you, you're probably not gonna be here six months from now. You're probably not gonna be here a year from now because the people are here to learn and to grow are taking notes and leaning in because they're listening to a guy who's written $25,000 a month. That's a guy that I want to listen to. That's a guy I want to implement and, and take away some of the things that he's doing. That's a guy who I want to make that type of income for my family. So I just think it's so important for people to understand that you're winning at such a high level because you're outworking them. Beto is good because he's put in the hours. It's not good because he's really good at communication. He's developed that. He, he's not really good because he can persuade people to buy life insurance. He ran into a lot of objections and he figured out how to overcome those objections or never get those objections. And I think that's what so many of us overlook is we wanna think that Beto is so good at his job, but I promise you he's so good at his job because he put in the scary hours, the hours you're not willing to work. He's waking up at 6 a.m. on the West Coast to dial the phone. He's in the Zoom room at 7 p.m. Central, aka 5 p.m. Pacific, when no one else is. Like, we're no special individuals here, I promise you that. The people who are winning at the highest level are just putting in more hours than you. We don't have I'm some magical you. recipe we just learn, reflect, fail, pick up the phone, call, pick brains, get knowledge, apply. It's really not that deep, you guys, I promise you. We're selling life insurance to people who raise their hand saying they want life insurance. They tell you they're not interested because they don't wanna be sold. They wanna see how you react. They wanna see if you can overcome their smoke screen. And most of us get caught up on it and say the leads suck and and whatever little excuse that we want to use. All leads suck, I promise you guys. The best lead in this business is a referral. And most of us don't even get those. That's the best lead in this business is a referral. The $72 mortgage protection lead that I paid for two days ago told me she's not interested. $72, she filled it out by hand and said she's not interested. Are those good leads? No, it's an opportunity. That's all it is. It's an opportunity to speak to someone about protecting their family. Now, is that a dead lead? No way. This is not the right time for her. Maybe I called her when she's driving on Interstate 35, trying to make sure she doesn't crash. Maybe she just got yelled at by her boss, so she's not in the best mood. I call her back a week later, I may have an appointment. I call her back a month later, I may see her. I call her back six months later, maybe it's the right time. I was literally just telling this to Denisha earlier, like people look at age leads like these are old. These are, these are six months old, 12 months old. I promise you, they're just as good as the brand new ones. Because you can quickly identify people who already bought life insurance, 
oh, I already got that taken care of. Instead of thinking, damn, I missed out on that opportunity. You should actually be excited because you identified a buyer. You identified someone who believes in life insurance, who wants to protect their family. And we have a numerous amount of carriers that we could typically put them in a better position. So instead of saying, damn, I missed out on that one, perfect. You're actually gonna make my job a lot easier. We can review the coverage you have and make sure you're not overpaying or you can't get more coverage for what you're already paying. You wanna peak curiosity. Instead of looking at it negatively, look at it positively. Last question, I'll let you guys go. How important is it for an agent to be coachable, Beto? It's the biggest, biggest thing. And even if you don't want to be coachable, you'll learn fast. You'll learn fast, very fast. It's the only way you can be in this business is, I mean, obviously, if any of you guys played sports and you're not coachable, you're out. Like, I can already tell you that. Same thing goes with this business. I mean, if not, learn it quick because it's going to be your best friend. And we have so many people that are available at your disposal. We have so many levels of people. This person here, all right, I want to get to another level. I'm talking to them. I want to get to another level. Let's talk to them. Like you're not reaching out. I don't know what else to tell you. It's all on you guys. It goes back to the ownership aspect of this business. I promise you what we do is not hard. I promise you what we do is not easy. It's not hard. It's not easy. It's just mentally challenging. And that's where most of us lose is this. We lose here. And then it, it, it turns into the tonality on the phone call. Like out of the 38 people that are on here still, do you smile and dial? Or do you bend over and dial and hope they pick up the phone and moan and groan and man, I, uh, smile and dial. It can feel that tonality. It's, it's mirroring them on the phone call. But that's all I got for you guys. If you guys got some value out of this call, please drop a BT in the chat for our man, Robert Tarango. The dude is an absolute animal. I can't wait to see where your business is at a year from now. And I can't wait to see how many lives you impact by sharing your story, sharing your journey and helping as many families as you can, man. It's an honor to be in business with you. I wish everyone had the work ethic that you did to make my life a hell of a lot easier. But the beautiful thing is, is we all have the ability to get to that level. We all have the ability to turn up our work ethic. We all have the ability to put in more hours. We all have the ability to get onto YouTube and to get better. We all have choices. This business is all about choices. You're gonna, you're gonna watch the Netflix series or you're gonna watch the guy who's making $20,000 a month? Are you going to scroll through social media or you're gonna pick up and, and call someone who you want to try to get to their level? It's all about choices in this business, you guys. And I promise you, you have the keys to your life with this opportunity, but it's gonna be up to you to see where you take the vehicle. So I appreciate your guys' time. Thank you, Robert. And uh, Thank you guys.